Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Y'all, looks like we done started out with a tough season. We finished off with a tough season last year. Um, but looks like today we're gonna go back to something that I'm a little better at, and that's making things. Squirrel hunting this morning. Uh, I rubbed my gun down that flintlock early this morning before I left out with uh, an oily rag, which is animal fats that I use. And there was some rust on the frizzing, so I rubbed it down. Well, when I got down there the first shot, it didn't even spark at all. So I had to get some sand off the ground and rub that good to get the oil off of it. It started sparking, and the flint moved. So got that straightened out, and uh, wound up breaking my ramrod. Uh, now, I had made this ramrod. It's got this piece, well, wrong end. It's got this piece made onto the end i made this from a privet shaft so being that we've got to make a brand new ramrod this morning part of it was due to the barrel needed swabbing out a little more often than i was doing it so i've got to do some taking better care of things I, a lot of my failure is probably lack of my knowledge of how to do things um so there's a huge learning curve to this going back to primitive not really primitive but Traditional archery, traditional muzzle loading. There's a reason that we went to more modern equipment. So I'm going to show you how I go about making a ramrod. Uh, now these are all privet shafts, and this is the same way, this same process that I do my arrows that I make. And I hadn't made no arrows yet this year. Um, the ones that I have made didn't come out. They don't shoot good in my bow. Uh, so I've got to do some more work on getting them to fly right they fly good they just not in that boat it don't they spine's not right so i bundle them up as they dry when i cut them green i strip the bark off uh, and they get bundled up like this so i have got one here that i think is what i am going to start with i think it is long enough and i was going to show you a little of the process that i go about I am spared that much to play with, so we're going to attempt to make one out of this. So let me show you a little of how I start. First thing is we're going to sand this down somewhat. And right here, there is a slight little knot. Oh, I'll show you. This is a very small hand planer. Take that, and I usually go from the bottom up. Now, you see this thing is not straight by no means, okay? So, you have to be careful. See, that kind of cut into that a little bit right there, which is all right for now. But this is a pretty rough sandpaper. So we're going to somewhat smooth it up. And now we're going to go get the fish cooker out. And we're going to try to do a little. All right, y'all. I do this pretty much the same way I do. Uh, I do uh, arrows. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I pretty well got this straight. I sat here and filmed this. And the camera wasn't on. <laughs> But anyway, it didn't take me but just a few minutes heating and working with this. I got a little bit more to do right there. There's a crook right down here. I need to get out. It don't take long, y'all. And you can see there's a little bit of a crook in that. Uh, and this ain't got to be done as perfectly as an arrow has got to be. So I can... Uh, and you got to watch right here. It's bending at these knots. If you ain't careful at that knot, it will... Uh, and it don't take this fish cooker long to heat it up. But right there at that knot, it'll break if you're not taking your time and being gentle. In fact, I try to bend it a little other side of the knot instead of trying to straighten it out right in the knot itself. 
I've got some more to do right there on the end, but it ticked a little bit on that end. You know how a bow will tick when you working on it. Cause you can see I got a little wonky in that end that I need to get out of it. Put my glove back on to work on this. Yeah, I thought I was a film and looked up and the camera wasn't on. I guess when I hit the button, I didn't know. Uh, I'll be honest with you, about done got frustrated this morning. Everything going backwards. Praise on you, you know what I mean? But being good at something means you just keep keep on keeping on. Don't get frustrated. Learning to control your frustration is a is a tough thing. And I may have to make another one because that's got a little booger right there in the end. But anyway, you just heat this up over this. And I like this fish cooker better than a um, campfire because my heat's more con concentrated right there into one area. In fact, you can put a metal funnel that I've got set over this and really concentrate it down if you want to. Um, but you can use a heat gun, a hair dryer if it's not too bad to work. Uh, these, you can steam it. There's a lot of different ways. You just need to get it hot and uh, and get some and get it straight. I need to do a little bit more right over here. All right, cut that off. Let's make a, 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 a ramrod. All right, here's one of the best ways to sand something fairly smooth. And this is the way I do a lot of this stuff, y'all. Now keep that end from flopping. You want to stick it in something, and I had a ring deal, but. Hold it kind of down, pressure a little bit down against something. And then, of course, once you get out here, you can. So you just. And that's a fairly gritty. I think that's like, I don't see it right on there. I think it's 60 grit, something like that. If y'all like this right here, you can smooth something up pretty quick. But you can see how that is. The, the the big deal with the ramrod is it has to be a certain diameter through that thing to uh, fit down in your gun. So I have got to, uh, you can see by this, I ain't got no long ways to go, but right here on this end, I, have, I do have quite a ways. All right, one more thing. If you need to take off a good bit of wood, like on this end is a little bit fat, Take this little planer. Now don't dig down. I'm just kind of pushing it lightly over it and getting some. I'm not trying to uh, not bearing down, in other words. And you can set this 
and I done got a piece of wood wedged up in there. After I've run that planer over that a little bit, I'm gonna put my glove on because y'all this sandpaper gets gets awful hot. And this is a this is a strip that's like oh I'm making read that. Now it's too wore out, but it's like 60 grit or something like that. I don't know. But you're working on the basically the same principles of a, a lathe. You're just doing it with sandpaper. You can change the spine of an arrow. Now, you can't make it stiffer, but you can make it more flexible. <laughs> but we're just trying to make this fit in the ramrod holders. It'll go in them, it'll go in the barrel. Oh, we're a little tight right there. Let me get my pencil. Because you don't want to take off. I'm going to put some markings where I need to start. And you don't never know how far up. That is, you may can do a little of that by hand, but it's it's faster to chuck it up in this drill. And y'all, I know there's a lot of y'all that are probably better hunters than I am that uh, may not quite be as figured out on the crack. This is just a tip I thought would help right there. Help y'all if you broke a ramrod instead of having to go order one, and you can use about any kind of wood. Those dial rods, I'm rough on stuff, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. I get in a hurry. I get focused on what I'm doing, and I'll tear up some stuff. So I'm, I'm force it, you know. And I can't help it. That's just the way I am. Oh, I know I need to repent of that. But I thought this would help some of you. Just go build you your own ramrod we steal a little bit stuff right in there we're gonna have to use that stiffer off and i'm worried about this where i i crack this on this end down here Moving bow staves up there. All right, we ain't. there it goes. Come on, come on. We still tight right in this area. Let's see, is it gonna go though? It's still going. piece of tubing right there to stick that up in. Keep that from doing all that flopping. All right. 
let's see what we got now. I really don't like this thing to just be hard to get in and out of there. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we down in there, boys. All right, we have just made a ramrod. Y'all see that? If it'll fit in this part, then it'll fit in the rest of it, so. All right, now the next project, I tell you what I should have done though. You wanna get this all the way down in there. Can't hit the hole. I right, don't you say it. I know what you thought. I'm gonna mark that. Y'all, I'm a heat better at making stuff than I am killing critters, I reckon. <sighs> I'm still frustrated about that squirrel hunt and that deer hunt. I know what we're gonna wind up doing. We're gonna wind up taking a modern rifle or a gun that we get some stuff killed, get this itch scratched. On this ramrod, we have got to get this little old, well, that pushed right out of there. Need to go get my pliers. Ah, right, that's what we got to work with right there. We got to make that again. And you see, it's got to have its shoulder. It just has to insert up in there. So... We need to cut this off, and I think I am going to I think I'm gonna cut it off with a hacksaw because I can get a I ain't putting much pressure because. I don't want that boogered up on the other side. All right. And you see, I got that cut off. I got a little old burr. Take my little old whittling knife here. I like that knife. All right. Okay, we got to take that down some right on that end now. Y'all just bear with me now. Bear with me. I'd do better probably if I'd take me a... It's hot. It's mighty hot there. Come on. I haven't used my old hammer in a while. Y'all like my Bodoc hammer? It split a little bit on me. 
but it still works. We are not pounding. We are tapping. <laughs> All right, we got that down on there. Now you can shoulder that, but now I've got this screwed into where it's seated up here on that instead of against that wood. Let's see if she, she fits all the way in there. Now if, we, if it works, we're gonna do some staining and animal fats and such as that. I like to work with natural. Oh, look at that, y'all. Now, I do like that to stick up a little bit because I like to be able to grab that nail right there. That is a nail I threaded, by the way. And uh, I can grab that to pull it out. So, y'all, we are, we are fit. Uh, one more little tiny thing right here we got to do. My little bitty pen there now. My little bitty pen. Get my bowl of stuff there. Okay, I hope I got my little bit of drill bit. You know how you always break that lidless one, and it's the very one you need to do this. Seems like I got it, though. Usually, you have to go buy you a stack of them. Oh, Go ahead and take that drill bit out and put it back in there where it goes so you don't knock it over and break it. All right. Y'all may not have seen that gun barrel was right in your way. All right, and this is our little bitty. You can't see it. It's just a little old bitty set pin that goes in here. Okay, and that helps seat that. Oh man, y'all. We just want to smooth it up a little bit. Y'all, in just a matter, get my gun back over here out of the way. I get my junk all jumbled up because y'all say I don't put nothing up. Not when I'm a working. I'm a, I'm a throwing stuff down here, there, yonder, left and right, whatnot, and all you know, and all and everything. We're gonna slick this up good. Probably be good if I went ahead and made me an extra and a two, you know, had them ready to go. But I'll put these back up in my rafters right up here. And I'll show y'all why y'all are looking right there where they is at. Yeah, during the summer they dry real good up here close to this metal. Uh, and here in the south, it stays warm pretty year round. So in the daytime, you can put bow staves up there. And y'all see where all my bow staves is up there. I've got a good bit of Osage. So. Osage, uh, there's one horn beam, one cedar, uh, a couple of, there's another hickory or two. And then uh, crepe myrtle. I hadn't made crepe myrtle yet. I heard that it would make a good bow. All right, we're smoothing that out. What do y'all think about uh, some black walnut? This right here, y'all, be a can of black walnut dye renderings, whatever you want to call it. Turn that lid off. That junk just gets everywhere. I need a rag. Somebody's a, a revving, really a revving a motor up. I 
We're going to die. I want to die this anyway. So we're going to shove that off down in there. And that's cold. I got it in that metal bucket because I was setting that bucket up on my arm. Uh, on my. And this is going to die my fingers. But I need to heat it up probably. And y'all, I thought about adding a little bit of vinegar to it. Vinegar on a lot of things helps it to die if it don't have time to just soak. But look how that's darkening that up very, very nicely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put both of these pieces of denim in there and let it darken them up, dyed in that stuff. Man, that water just is black. Y'all look in there. You see where I put that denim in there? You can take you an old pair of white blue jeans you done wore the knee out of and uh, stick them off down in there and dye that, cut it off at the knee. Sew the end of that sucker up across there. Make you a nice little old sack to tote to put some of your stuff in. Gives it a good natural color. And if you want to darken up a pair of blue jeans that you don't wore out to honey in, you ain't got no camouflage britches, you water them up and shove them off in there and then let them dry. It'll be camouflage. All right. We're going to let this little shaft dry. I'm going to throw that in there and let that die right along with the rest of that. I thought I had another piece or two of them. I may heat it up a little bit on my burner. Let that finish dying. But once this dries, I'm going to uh, rub it down with some animal fats. There went a nail. Y'all see that? <sighs> so after it dries, I'll pick y'all back up a little bit. Uh, we got this rod dry now. And I done done 10 hundred other things. It's got a little bit of a bow to it. Hold the whole thing as it's it sat out there and dried. But that ain't gonna hurt nothing for this. Now what I've got in this bucket is animal fat. That is from last year, me harvesting animals. So what I do, reach in there and just get me some on my rag right here. Oh, uh, my neighbor down there, her grandson come up and lit a brush pile and uh, it had been needing burning for a while, so I stopped, went and got the tractor, and went down there and helped them. They was actually two brush piles, and instead of having to light two separate piles, I helped them move that over, and it's where I'd been cutting some firewood, so I got a couple of big old stumps out of that stuff and brought it up here and piled it up. But see how I got that rubbed down? Now look how what a shine we got on that thing. Y'all... That is going to be a good ram rod. I need to get that little bit of bow out of that. Thing. But anyway, I was going to tell you something else, too. I went in there and took the lock out of this rifle, cleaned all it, pulled the tenons out, pulled the barrel off. When I was cleaning it, the tenon up here come loose. This one right here, I had epoxy dam. I took it over out of the shop, got the wire welder, and said, bzz, bzz. I attack welded both of them, filed it back down, put it back together. They ain't coming back loose again. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can burnish this out. I don't want to do too much to it. Oh yeah, look at that. I can live with that. Um, but we have got this 
repaired and uh, I've got my barrel tack welded back together. I cleaned that barrel really good. Uh, and y'all, nothing has continued to go just right, but I have had some good small victories today. Uh, in cleaning that, I couldn't find my big metal jag that, that fits. I've got one for my 50 caliber, the 40 calibers, but I don't have one for this 36 caliber. So I had got a plastic jag. Well, it got down in there where it was kind of corroded, and I was trying to do some scrubbing, and that joker broke off. I took every plastic jag that I could find and put them in a the garbage can. They won't never be another plastic jag. A jag is that part you screw on the end of your ramrod that the rag goes over for the two or three people that may not have knew. Um, so, anyway, we back to where we can hunt again. Uh, I know if y'all watched my last hunting video with this rifle, I didn't kill no squirrels. I didn't say in the video that I broke the ramrod, but I would have stayed till I killed a squirrel with that rifle. I shot it out here a time or two uh, a while ago, and it's accurate. Um, I don't know if I had just got frustrated this morning because things kept going wrong or what actually happened, but I didn't, which I shot at about four squirrels and missed every one of them. So hopefully we get all that remedied and uh, get us some squirrels with it. I killed squirrels last year. Last year, toward the end of the year, I was hitting everything I was shooting at with it, so maybe I just need to, to do some more shooting with it. But thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We just built us a new round rod for this rifle. Uh, love this old gun, y'all. It, it's it's uh, been a trip now. Make sure I keep it on half cock there. But I got everything cleaned up good. And I don't know if y'all ever seen this or not. If I showed you, I'll have to bring the camera over here where I can get in the light. Where is it at? Right there. Right there. What do y'all think about that? Stamped in the barrel, Spirit of the Outdoors. So anyway... Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Remember the best way to do things, the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all.